Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams. Joining us today is Fire Captain Robbie Simpson and K-9 Sonny. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Tell Glad us to be about here. Sonny, the star. No offense, yeah. our star. Oh, I get it. Everywhere I go. <laughs> Sonny's an accelerant detection K-9. He's uh, a Goldador, half golden retriever, half yellow lab. He's two and a half years old, and he's been with the city of Phoenix for about two months now. Two months? Mm-hmm. Um, I met Sonny at, in New Hampshire. I went back for a month of training. Sonny had been training already on accelerants for about three to four months, and then we spent a month training together. Um, so how's he doing? He's doing great. He, his, his, his finds in the field have to be backed up by a lab here in Phoenix, and so far his his results are coming back very high. So I'm pleased with him. <clears throat> As a fire investigator, he makes our job very, or much more easy. Uh, something that could take us hours or days to make an educated guess as to where to collect a sample, he can complete that task in minutes. It's amazing. So, oh, it's, it's amazing what he finds, how he finds it. Okay, so when there's a fire, and do you, does it have to be suspicious for you to take him in, or is it routinely done? Our, our fire investigators go on all fires, all structure fires, or fires that have some degree of suspicion. Um, and then when our investigators get there and they sense something that's suspicious, then they will call us out. And how hot is it when he goes in? It's typically at that point, the fire's been extinguished for hours, okay. sometimes a day. So how long does it really take to train him? I mean, um, or train you, I'm not sure which is. <laughs> <laughs> he trains quicker and easier than I do. I think. <laughs> um, the handler that got him had him and worked him for about three or four months prior to our training. And they start off with simple tasks and uh, introducing the dog to an accelerant. Our method of uh, testing is just 50% evaporated gas. And Sonny's taught that when he sees, smells that accelerant, he's taught to sit down and then he's, he's a food reward dog. So then he eats. And that's the only time Sonny eats is when he's working. So we train four to six times a day, and then obviously when we're working fires. I'm sorry. You're fine. He's very social. I know. He's, he's never a met a stranger. Buddy. He is so sweet. Yes. So how did they get selected to be, get trained for so, this? <clears throat> Sonny initially started as a handicapped service dog. Uh, he was recareered. He didn't cut it in the handicap service industry. He occasionally gets excited about something and he pulls. And my suspicion is that's why he didn't make the cut. He saw a lizard. He saw a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> or back east they have chipmunks and a lot of birds. Yeah, it uh, could be a little handicap there for yeah, a person. That yeah, that would that be difficult for a handicapped person. So he was with Paws with a Cause in Michigan. And uh, main specialty dogs is who trained him. And they have people that they network with. So when, when those handicap industries, when they have a dog that's not gonna work for them that they think might be workable for us, then they call main specialty dogs. And uh, those, those guys go and evaluate. So they evaluated Sonny and knew right away that he would work. Sonny has a very high uh, prey drive. He's very interested in working and he likes searching. He's, he's got a great nose. He, he wants to sniff everywhere we go. So that's highly advantageous to us. How long do they last? Does the sniffer ever wear out? Um, they say that uh, some of these dogs will get bored six to eight years into their, into their service. Uh, at this point, Sonny's two and a half years old. I don't see him becoming bored. He just <clears throat> has such a high prey drive. He wants to work. Um, 
we have a five-year commitment or I have a five-year commitment to the program. So I'm, I'm hoping to get another seven and a half years out of them. You're gonna work that hard, are you? I think so. Some of these dogs will work up until 15 or 16 years really? old. Yeah, they'll, they'll work right up until. Didn't, did you have, you used to have one, Sadie? We had Sadie. So Fred Andy's had Sadie and they both retired I don't know when, five years ago. Yeah, I know it's been a while yeah, ago. It's been so quite we've long. been without for five we've years? We've been without for about five years. Oh, that's too bad. It is. So are they very costly? Um, this dog's donated to the city by State Farm. So State Farm paid for Sonny, paid for all of his training. State Farm Insurance paid for all my training. And that's wonderful. State Farm sees it as. Uh, part of their community outreach program. And also, it, he's an expensive dog, <clears throat> very expensive. But they see it as if he, if he comes into play on one house fire or one payout for them or any other insurance company <clears throat> that he pays for his whole lifetime of training right then and there. Oh, and uh, State Farm, their specialist that I spoke with, told me that they, they expect him to save them one fire a year. Wow, that's so impressive. That's a huge savings, yes, but it is. It's, arson is a very costly program, a very, it's very expensive. Yes, but it's worth every penny, aren't you? Yes, you are. And just save everybody money and help all the officers, what a good baby, yes. He's so lovable. Yeah, He's just he adorable. Everywhere we go, this is, this is how he is. He sort of lights up the room. He really does. Yeah. Yes, he does. He's a good boy. It's, it's amazing what the dogs, what dogs bring to our lives. Oh, I know. And uh, all they have to offer, you know, all the different working dogs throughout in the medical field, uh, searching, whether it's... And it's amazing. Cadaver, drugs, accelerants. They can now even uh, kill cancer on some Cancer, I mean, seizure all, detection. Yes, it's just mm -hmm. really uh, amazing. Diabetes, uh -huh. they're using dogs and assisting people with diabetes. His first trip out was successful, I hear. His first trip out was very successful. Um, I flew in, it was a spent all day trying to get from New Hampshire to Phoenix. And I finally got home at about 11 o'clock and at 1.30 in the morning, one of the investigators called and we went out and uh, Sonny had four hits, uh, four alerts on accelerant and all four of those alerts came back as positive. So we're off to a great start right there. He knows how to impress his boss. <laughs> <laughs> He's no I fool. wonder who's the boss. <laughs> I think if he had thumbs, he would be the boss. Yeah, probably true. Probably yeah. true. So, so, in the future, do you think we could have two dogs, or is this a one-dog city? I, I would love to see another dog. I don't know if that will happen. <clears throat> um, currently, there's another dog in Gilbert, and we tend to work together. We work together on our training. Uh, Dave Zering, the Gilbert handler, he's been doing this for six years. He's a great mentor. He's got a ton of great life experience, a ton of great advice. So we do some training together and uh, if I leave town, Sonny goes with me and Dave comes over and helps out and likewise. A reciprocal agreement for dogs. Great. Yes. Good. So, well, I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for and, having us. It's been a pleasure. And especially thank you for bringing Sonny uh, one of the Best members of our community. Great member. Could we make him number one in the fire department? Do you think we could do that? I, I'd be willing to tell the chief that. That's on you. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for Maybe being number here. two. <laughs> okay. Well, she might get picky about that. You're right. Okay. Robbie and Sonny, thank you for joining me today. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll be meeting our newest member of the Phoenix Police Department, K9 Jack. Heads up Phoenix, today's safety message has to do with keeping your focus on the road. Distracted related incidents are on the rise. 
and they can be deadly. Avoiding distractions such as texts or phone calls when navigating the road is key to safety. Remaining focused means you're less likely to be a victim of an accident or cause one. It's important to always pay attention to what's going on around us, especially when we're riding our bikes behind the wheel or walking the street. That text or phone call, it can wait. Focus on the road. Don't walk distracted. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. Remember, Remember to always keep, keep your focus, focus on, on the road. road. Welcome back. Joining us now is police officer Lisa Fisher and police canine Jax. Thank you for coming today. Not at all. Thank you for having us. No. So, how long have you had this partner? Uh, Jax and I have been working together for coming on three years. And how did you become a partner with him? Where did, where did they get him? And Tell us all about. You know, I forget what kennel um, he came from specifically, uh, but I spent about nine years in patrol, decided that uh, this career path was something that I wanted to, to, to look into. So I tested, um, came out high on the list, uh, which is good because in canine, like the positions are, uh, are hard to come by. People don't usually leave this, uh, this job unless they retire or, uh, or promote. Um, so it's very hard to get to it, but it was great. Came out high on the list. Um, went up in uh, October of 2016. Um, Jax was not my first dog. My first dog had some medical issues, so he had to be returned to the kennel. Um, but Jax and I have been working together ever since, so that's great. He's a good partner. Where did he come from? Um, he came from a kennel. Initially, he was from, he's from the Czech Republic, so that's where he was bred and born um, and raised until he was probably about a year. We got him when he was 14 months from the kennel, but the kennel was in the United States. I just can't remember which kennel it was. We used several. It's amazing that uh, how many of them are bred out of the country but end up on police force. Yes, um, yeah, a lot of the breeding, uh, I mean, it's sad to say the breeding regulations I think are a little bit more lax over there as, what they, as far as what they do with the unwanted dogs, um, you know, which is a shame, but certainly we end up with, with some very good products here. Um, I know, no, I, you're being obnoxious. Um, he sees the balls in the Yeah, the, on between the, table. the balls and his toy. Yeah, uh -huh. you're obnoxious, and he knows the cameras are running now, so we're going to well, get absolute worst behavior. It's his show. <laughs> <laughs> should be that, somebody's show. Yeah, well, you are most welcome to be. Oh, look at how pretty you are. Oh, and how well-mannered you are. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. When he wants to be. And you were telling me he's like a toddler. So what's, how do you describe being a toddler uh, when he's a police dog? I mean, you always think of him as fierce, <laughs> killers, know. whatever. Uh, yeah, not uh, not killers, but certainly they are uh, very fierce. They're very what we call um, drivey or driven. They have a very high drive in a lot of things. Um, my boyfriend just says that that's a synonym for crazy. Like we just won't admit it, uh, which is true. Uh, and I say they're like toddlers because sometimes they're very sweet and well behaved, and they just look exactly like you want them to look, and they act exactly how you want them to act. Um, and then sometimes they're insane. They break things and uh, they focus on things for no reason. Um, he has a big thing with a. Uh, biting things in bags. So we were serving a search warrant with the SWAT team this morning and we were searching the yard and he bit into a bag of a uh, joint compound, um, which promptly exploded all over him. So he was clean before this morning. Um, now, of course, he's covered in joint compound, um, but they just do things unpredictably sometimes and for their own amusement. unknown reasons. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely amusement. <laughs> he's so pretty. Thank so. you very much. He's very vain. You can't tell him that. Oh, I can't tell him. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're just handsome. <laughs> so, so what kind of jobs does he go on? What's, what's some of his greatest adventures? Uh, so we are dual purpose patrol and narcotic certified. So we look for bad guys and we look for drugs. Um, but he, we do all kinds of things. We also participate in our uh, SAU or our SWAT team canine integration program, which is great. So uh, we go out and support um, our SWAT team in all of their planned operations, barricades, search warrants, things of that nature. Um, which is great. So we get to hunt the, uh, the really, really dangerous bad guys. Um, and Knockwood, so far, we've been very uh, safe doing that and very effective doing that. I think, uh, I think the SWAT guys really like having us there. Um, we support our patrol operations and everything that they do, a lot of things that they do, um, open doors, investing burglaries, investigating burglaries, excuse me. Um, looking for drugs for them and for net teams and for our Drug Enforcement Bureau. And uh, we try and stay busy. It sounds like you do, <laughs> you do. Is, I take it this is homes, vehicles, the whole gamut? Yes, yeah, we go everywhere. Apartments, homes, vehicles, um, 
doing tactical surveillances of people who have uh, failed to stop for patrol officers or for other details who have tried to conduct traffic stops and then people flee. Um, you know, we go after those people sometimes and stolen vehicle suspects and armed robbery suspects and a little, little bit of everything. Oh, very it's never boring. No. How many canyons do we have? Uh, in Phoenix, when we are fully staffed, we have 17 teams. Uh, most of them are dual purpose. We have one triple purpose dog who is patrol narcotics and uh, cadaver certified. We have one dog who actually just yesterday got certified in uh, explosive ordinance detection. So that's fantastic. Um, great certification, very difficult to obtain and maintain that. Um, so now he is patrol and then EOD certified. Um, so it's great. We kind of, we got a little bit of everything. How do you get him trained? I mean, to be in Phoenix and all that we deal with, all that you have to tackle? Uh, <clears throat> it is, it is an ongoing process. I will tell you that we get most of our dogs green which means that they have no training whatsoever. When I got him, he didn't know how to sit or lay down on command or stay or come or any of that stuff. Um, and we, we teach them using toys, his toy that he's trying to get to as a reward. Um, they come with a little bit of bite work in him, but we teach them how to let go and bite on command instead of just whenever they feel like it. And- uh, Oh, yes, hey, toy. Uh, nope. He says, but you got the toy. I know, he's like, you have it. Yes, there we go. All right, now you can have that and just relax for a second. Um, and so we teach a lot of, and it's ongoing. So when we're through with the basic academy, which when we first get the dog, the handler and the team go through like a three to four month basic academy together. So they can kind of bond and the handler kind of gets to know what to do with the dog and the dog gets to trust the handler. Um, when you graduate from that is when you get to start going out and taking calls, um, finding people, apprehending them if necessary. Uh, and then from then on, the training is ongoing, so we try and do some type of training every day, whether it's a uh, narcotic detection or an area search or a building search or um, stuff in areas with our SWAT team. We work a lot around them um, to avoid, you know, accidental bites and stuff like that, getting a, getting a team recognition for, for him, knowing what all those guys look like in their helmets and their big heavy vests. And um, please don't do that. Stop that. Nope. He chews through the handle and then it's no good anymore. Stop that. No <laughs> good boy. So did you have to get trained how to be, get trained? Uh, yes, essentially that's what the basic academy is. So we have, we have a main unit trainer um, who leads or coordinates the training. So I was a brand new handler when I got him. When I get my next dog, I won't be as green uh, as I was obviously when I started this training. Um, but the, I know, thank you, the unit trainer <laughs> teaches you Sloppy how to teach him. I know that it's always this all the time. At least we didn't eat anything gross today other than joint compound. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the trainer will, will teach the handler how to teach the dog. And then from that, that point on, you're pretty much responsible for, for your dog's training, making sure that he maintains like an obedience profile and stays up on his bite work and, um, and things of that nature. So the first time out, did you let him off leash? Uh, it, it depends on the search, depends on the circumstance. Uh, I honestly don't remember what my first search was. Um, we do several, we do searches a lot, most of the time in buildings off leash, um, cause it's contained and there's no chance that he's gonna run down the street and tag somebody accidentally. Um, in areas, uh, generally that's, that's on leash, just cause there's so was many it scary? people around. Um, it's, it's a little stressful sometimes for a lot of reasons, uh, this is, there's a lot of liability, I think, attached to, to these dogs, certainly in, in, the way that, uh, in the way that we use them. So trying to use that appropriately and be safe and still be cognizant of the dangers that are downrange. Um, the people that we are searching for typically right. are very dangerous people. Um, so you're trying to make sure that, uh, you know, you're keeping your search team safe, you're keeping yourself safe, you're keeping the dog safe as much as possible. Um, we ask them to do a very dangerous job. So it's kind of, I feel it's incumbent upon us to, you know, to take care of them as much as it's possible to do that. Um, making sure that your search team doesn't get bit, uh, make sure that no innocent <laughs> bystanders get bit, or, um, so it's just, it's a lot of responsibility certainly, but, uh, it's very rewarding at the same time. Also watching them, um, taking them from when they're green with no training up to their first, uh, find of a person and apprehension, uh, it's extremely rewarding feeling. It's really gratifying to, to see how far they've come. Um, and they just continue to improve until, until they retire. So I know you're a good dog. You're very handsome. So. It's going to be yours till you retire? Uh, that's the plan anyway, knock wood. Unless something happens uh, to me or him, we get to keep them for their whole working life. Uh, and then when the dog retires, we get to keep, we get to buy them from the city for a dollar or something like that. So um, they get to stay with us, which is great for us and our families who become very bonded to them, of course. Um, 
unless the dog is so out of control that they just wouldn't make a good pet, in which case they go to a rescue or they go to another handler or somebody who can accept all the, all the responsibility. Um, but I, I've never known of another of a dog that's gone elsewhere. I the handlers either. pretty much always keep them, yeah. And they live with you 24 hours. Right? Yes, which is fantastic. It's a benefit that we have in the city of Phoenix that a lot of agencies don't have, um, which is terrific for the dogs. It's terrific for the handlers. Um, they get to be close to their best friend, you know, obviously, which is the handler, uh, which frankly goes both ways down the up and down the lead. Um, we get to take good care of them, make sure that, you know, they're eating on schedule and that um, everything is good with their body. You know, we bathe them and stuff like that. I know, somebody just left. It's okay. And they move slowly. Yes. So therefore, they're under <laughs> suspect. <laughs> Very aware of what's going okay. on. Okay. There's new people in the room now. Just remember, you weren't supposed to move slowly. <laughs> okay. No, he'll survive. He's just, he's just curious. Like, he's not in, like, oh, I got to go find him in bite him mode right now. He's just checking out new things that happen in his environment. He's very aware of what's going on, which is kind of funny. I feel so safe. <laughs> I'm glad. That's, that's what we're going for, try and make things safe for people. When he first came in, I thought, how many collars does this dog have on? Is it going to be safe? Yes, uh, so three collars right now, and then, uh, then his harness, which is great. Yeah, he looks well armed. <laughs> yes. That mostly goes on kind of in this region with the teeth, uh, uh -huh. but everything else is just, it's, it's control for the handler, basically. Um, the pinch collar, the silver collar that he's on, um, it's just for increased control. So you, like you thought he was pulling me into this room, like on his flat collar, it's even worse. Um, he really, it's like water skiing behind, you know, behind the mm -hmm. dog. Um, the harness is good just for picking him up and being able to kind of move him around, just an extra handle on him when you need it. Um, and then the electronic collar, uh, as I was explaining to your colleague, um, is good for like long distance control and some minor corrections when needed. Um, nothing that we use to, to really tag them or punish them, but it's just, it's good to have, it's kind of a safety. Does he get to eat all the time? The fire dog was just here and only gets fed uh, as a reward. So does that apply to the? So we do not use food as a reward because um, we do so much obedience with them and so much work. Um, we found that if you give them like special treats or food every time, like you end up with a, uh, a fluffy dog. Uh, we try and run them a little bit lean just because the summers are so hot here. Um, we want to extend their lifespan and uh, extend their working life certainly and uh, running them lean we found is a good way to do that. It takes care of their joints also. Um, so he gets fed twice a day. We don't use food as reward. We use the toys. Uh, so we okay. found that as a very effective way of. I just can't let my grandson see this show <laughs> after you said that because his shepherd I babysit with often and after a day or two with me, it seems to be wider than when... Doesn't fit through the doorways quite as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I understand. Doesn't My parents are the same way. Well, I want to thank you for coming today. No, not at all. For bringing your best friend. Uh, I really have enjoyed this and, and glad to see a female handler too. Oh. Yes, so thank, thank you. you very much. Not at all. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs>
as of today? He is available right now, yes. And he's just so wiggly, so friendly. Um, and you know, we just love our senior pups. Like, so they're just gonna tell you everything that you already know. You don't have to guess about their personality. You know, puppies grow up, they might be different than when they're pups. Um, but you know, senior pups, they just have it all. He's already potty trained. He's already socialized. He loves everyone. He's been great with the other pups around here. He's been great with everybody that he's met. And he's super active, which is great for a senior pup. He just wants to walk, 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 explore, explore, explore. Um, I think, you know, having more than half of his life living on a chain, he was on there for seven years. Um, so I think now he he just, it's a time for him to adventure and explore, and we know that there's a perfect forever home out there for him. He is a great example of you don't chain a dog, you don't keep a dog out in the heat. Uh, also want to remind everybody, you don't take them out on the sidewalk without little booties. And it's illegal to take them in the parks, on the trails, if it's over 100 degrees. Yes, exactly. I mean, there are just so many safety tips that we can have for our pets in the heat. And like you mentioned, there are so many dangers of especially tethering. So, you know, um, the city of Phoenix has a different law than Tempe and Glendale, but a lot of cities here in Arizona don't have one. So it's really just got to kind of use common sense. So unfortunately, there is a lot of dangers with tethering. You know, even if it's a long enough rope, they could entangle themselves, which could keep them from getting to their water source or their shelter. Um, and unfortunately, we see a lot of those cases where they don't make it. Um, the heat is extremely dangerous, so you need to make sure that your pets have access to food, water, and shelter at all times. And cool water. Cool water, that's right, and make sure that it's in a plastic, non-spillable bucket. You know, if it's in that metal, it's going to be really hot, it's not going to be drinkable, and then of course we see a lot of times where there was a water source, but the pets dump it over or it evaporates. Make sure it's one of those big gallons. You know, if you have a small pup like this, it can be, make sure it's smaller so they can access it, but if you have a big dog, make sure it's at least five gallons. Or a kid's swimming pool. Yeah, th yeah, you know what, that's right. Or a swimming pool would be great. Make sure that they stay cool. But like you mentioned, um, yeah, just don't walk your dogs right now. The ground is too hot. So we have the seven second rule at the Arizona Humane Society. If you can't hold the back of your hand to the ground for uh, at least seven seconds, it's way too hot for our pet's sensitive paws. And then also make sure that you are limiting their exercise to really early in the morning or late at night. Um, it's just, it can be over 100 degrees even at nighttime here in Arizona, as we know. Oh, yeah. So make sure that you're just making, getting all their exercise in and out inside and then when you go outside just limit that. Great. That's all the time we have for this month on the issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show call my office at 602-262-7444 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district one and thank you both for being here and he is available for adoption today. See you next time on the issues.